Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Millum Pro Bronze Pocket Pen. Big thank you to Millum for sending this along for review. They did provide this free of charge. However, I will be giving a completely unbiased review of this pen, as well as this little inkwell. Um, you can buy these in a set or separately. We'll go ahead and get into what I like about it, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike. Do a writing sample, give you a conclusion on both. But let's go ahead and get into size comparisons first. All right, onto the capped size comparison. So you can see here if it will stay in frame and not roll off. It is a little bit longer than the Lilliput. It's honestly closer in length to the Caveco Sport. Um, if you don't know, at the bottom is the Millum Pro uh, pocket pen. Right here is the Caveco Lilliput, the one that keeps rolling. The Caveco Sport and Lamy Safari. So it's kind of in between the Sport and the Lilliput, to be honest. Um, it's not quite as long as the Sport, but it's very close. And it's not quite as wide as the Sport, but it's wider than the Lilliput. If you're looking for something in, in kind of an in-between size range between those two, so this is too large for you, this is too small, this might be a good place to look, at least size-wise. And you can see, obviously, compared to a full-size fountain pen, these are much, much shorter. All right, onto the uncapped size comparison. So you can see it's it's got probably half an inch on the Lilliput. Again, very close in size to the Sport. I will say using the Sport uncapped is more comfortable than using the Millum Pro uncapped, in my opinion. It's just me. And again, the Lamy Safari. Um, none of these are, are full-length pens when you before you post them, so they're not going to add up to that. So let's go ahead and check out how they compare when they're posted. All right, so you can see that when they're posted, this actually beats out the Caveco Sport by just a bit in terms of length, making this the longest pen on the table currently. Um, again, the Caveco Lilliput is shorter than it. However, it is still extremely usable at this size. And even the Lamy Safari is beaten out by this. So when posted, it comes up to a very good um, just writing size for everyday use. Again, not my favorite on the table to write with um, as far as ergonomically, but if you're worried about it being too short, just post it and you're good to go. All right, so on to what I like about the pen and the inkwell. So we'll do the pen first. Um, the build quality is very nice. It's very durable. This, at least to me, appears to be milled out of two just chunks of bronze resulting in a very durable pen. There's no way I could possibly begin to bend this pen. Um, the machining is very good, very, very thick, um, even with the, with the hollowed out parts. It's just, it's a tank as far as build goes. It's, it's ridiculous. These are, these are very, very hefty, very solid parts. And I do not see this pen breaking on you. Even the thinnest part of the section, as you could tell, is secured very far down in the body. It's not going to like bend or warp or anything. It's pretty good. The size and weight are also really nice. You can use it unposted, but posted it comes up to a very usable size. The weight is heavy. It is for sure heavy. Um, it's, let's see. This is very approximate. Do not 100% trust me on this. It feels pretty close in weight to the Caveco Lilliput. Um, it may be a bit heavier to spread out on over a bit more surface area. But even when it's uncapped, I can use it for quick notes. It is not comfortable to use uncapped for long periods of time, though. If you have very small hands, you may be able to get by with it. But generally, I would recommend posting this um, just for ease of use. The design is very nice as well. It's a super minimal pen. Um, there's just not a lot here, and uh, I enjoy that. Um, it has a little bit of flair on it. It has polished end and finial. Um, you can see these have been very, very scratched up, but they are polished. They do look pretty nice. The rest of it is a brushed finish. It's brushed horizontally, if that matters at all to you. Um, it's just, the lines are very simplistic. It's very, very straightforward in its design. And if you're looking for something that kind of 
in my opinion, this isn't always a good thing, but in my opinion, it values design first. This is going to be a good place to look. Um, the Kaveco Lilliput is for sure a very, very pretty pen. Um, however, I will say just appearance-wise, this one is a little bit nicer. The packaging as well that it comes in is very, 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 very cool. Um, it comes in this little white box, which if you've seen my unboxing of this pen, you already, you've already seen this part. But it just comes in this glass tube. It's, it's very, very nice looking, even in this glass tube. It's going to look very nice on a desk or something like that. Um, I would remove the tape, obviously. It's a bit unsightly, but this is it's pretty cool. Um, it's a nice way to ship the pen. I would be a little bit worried about it cracking or shattering, but it came all the way from Poland here to America without any issues. So it's for sure durable. You could probably even carry the pen around in that if you wanted to reduce the patina and the scratching. And that's one thing this pen is going to do. It's going to patina over time. You can already see, I've only had it for a few months here, and you can see there's a lot of spotting and things like that. These were completely polished. These are now scratched quite a bit, especially this one, um, just because this is the side the cap is posted on. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of discoloration, and that's part of these materials. They're they're going to become discolored over time, especially the section you can see where my hand rests is actually um, quite a bit different in color from the rest of the pen, just because that's where most of the uh, hand oils that cause the patina and things like that are sitting at. So it's going to change color. It's not going to look like even this forever. Um, and it certainly is not going to look like it does new for the next year or two. Um, you can polish it out if that's something that interests you. But for the most part, I find it easier to let these pens patina over time. And same thing with the inkwell. It's kind of the same bronze material. There, It's a very, very nice um, build on this one as well. Again, super, super durable. The only thing that would concern me all is this glass ink window. But to be honest, it's recessed so far in there, which you can kind of see. I'm not that worried about it cracking or shattering or anything. This thing is, again, super durable. It's actually heavier than the pen by quite a bit. So although it's significantly shorter, it's, it's much, much wider. However, it is still very, very, very small. It is extremely, extremely tiny. Um, the packaging for it as well, just really nice. It comes in this machined aluminum case. This is actually what I carry it around in, just in case there is a spill, although I haven't had any issues with it. The machining on the top of the cap for the logo Millum is very, very nice. The knurling all the way around is great. It's really, honestly, I would say a necessity for gripping a bottle this small, but once you start to get it off, it's great. Um... The ink that I have in here is, I believe, Noodler's La Cuillé Royale. I, I'm probably mispronouncing that. It's a nice, like, bluish purple. You'll see more of it in the writing sample. This does hold a good bit, though. You could probably refill this pen four or five times off of this inkwell. And that may not sound like a ton, but for the size, it's, it's pretty good. So it's got a good capacity. Super, super well built. It's it's great. I wouldn't worry about this thing spilling, honestly. The seal is very good. But if you are concerned about it spilling, again, you can just toss it in here. And um, this actually has an O-ring on the inside of it. And is rather difficult to open with my very short nails. You can see it has an O-ring. It also has some foam in there just to protect it. So I generally um, keep this in here especially when I'm carrying it back and forth to work every day, although I did just leave it on my desk for a few days and just kind of let it sit there. I used it when I ran out at work. It's a very, very um, well-made little inkwell, though. To be honest, this is probably my favorite part of the whole thing. This thing's really cool. On to the neutral. So we will go ahead and set this aside and do the pen first, just like last time. Nib and flow. Uh, it's not great. <laughs> It's it's fairly consistent. However, this pen dries out very, very quickly when you're not writing with it. I'm talking about like a minute or two, and it's dry. Um, I do experience hard starts frequently, and I experience skips occasionally. But usually, usually once you get the flow going, it'll write just fine. But it's not amazing. Uh, this is a medium nib, as you can see. It is a medium Schmidt nib. 
I don't have a ton of experience with Schmidt nibs. I wasn't really blown away. Um, I'd put them somewhere along the lines of Bach. I vastly prefer Yovo nibs, but it's not not terrible. It's it's not scratchy at all. It's fairly smooth. The tines were aligned when I got it. I don't think I'll be able to focus on that at all. Uh, standard plastic feed. It's nothing special. And for this price, I think you should be getting something pretty good. Um, personally, I prefer the nib on the Lilliput and the Sport. However, this is certainly not a bad nib. It's just okay. The section isn't super great. It is very thin, as to be expected on these pens, to be honest. Um, the biggest thing for me is it's really short. And I get that that's probably a necessity. Although, to be honest, I probably would have extended the section a little bit further. And uh, for other reasons that I, I may cover later. But it's just, it's really short. I, I, you know, I can't really get much of my fingers on here at all. So generally what I find myself doing is putting my pointer, or yeah, my index finger and my middle finger here and my thumb here just to get a semi-comfortable grip. It's not great. Uh, it's not super comfortable to hold. The edges are really, really sharp right here. And they do kind of dig into your finger. Again, we'll come back to that later. It is usable, certainly. And... Uh, for long-term writing, you may not notice it as much, but it's not the best section on a pocket pen. It's it's not that good. I actually prefer the section on the Lilliput and especially on the Sport over this one. It's just not very ergonomic. Although it does look very nice, it's not that great for actual everyday use. Speaking of the section, when you go to thread this cap on, occasionally it will get misthreaded. Now what this will do, of course I won't be able to do it here, is this will cause the cap to become locked onto the section. So when you go to unscrew it, you're going to have to end up unscrewing the body from the section. Now, if this had only happened once over the course of a month or two, I wouldn't have mentioned it. But it's happened probably once a day. Uh, granted, I use these pens for about nine hours a day most days of the week so it is it's not super often but it does happen daily to me um, over the course of a long day here we go it just did it so I've been sitting here so you can see it's it's crooked so now you can't tighten down the cap anymore and when you go to unscrew it this body is going to become unthreaded from the section you have to screw all this all the way out until you can get enough of a grip here to pop it loose now it's not a super big thing, but it's not great. Uh, the threading for the section to the body is fantastic. Never had that issue, um, which I, I unthread the cap a lot more, obviously. So maybe it's just there, but it, it's not fantastic. It's just not. The threading on the back is pretty good. I haven't run into any issues um, with it locking up or anything like that. However, just like the Lilliput, this little rounded section makes it nearly impossible sometimes to get a good um, grip on this when you're trying to post it. So if I'm in a rush and I'm sitting here, you kind of have to wiggle around a bit until you can find it and then screw it on. It's not an exceptionally um, long process, but if you're fumbling around a bit, it's going to be a bit difficult to get it to thread sometimes, which is a bit frustrating. One thing I do appreciate about the threading on this section is it's very quick to, to cap and uncap this pin because there's not very much there. However, it is very secure. I didn't have any issues with this pin coming loose. And once the cap is on there, it does take a bit of force to uh, begin to unscrew it. So that's nice. The branding on the pin, I mentioned the branding on the inkwell is very, very nice. It is very well machined. Again, as you can see, they're very clean lines. Very, very well done. The branding on the pin is not so clean. I do like how mil minimal it is. I said minimal how minimal it is but it almost looks stamped instead of machined out maybe that's the look they were going for I would prefer something a bit more cleaner it's just me but I figured I'd bring that up and again the branding is it's very small it does appear to be right in the center which is nice a lot of good things about it I just wish they cleaned it up a little bit in my opinion last thing the price is not great this pin is over $90 yeah, I can see it. 
I, I can see where your money's going. It's going into these solid chunks of bronze or brass or aluminum or whatever you get. It's it's expensive. I understand that. You know, the polishing is a nice touch. There's a fair amount of attention to detail in appearance on this pen. In terms of appearance, this pen is great. And that's kind of the overall impression I get of the company. I'm not, I'm not disparaging them in any way, but they seem to be very focused on their appearance and their design and their presentation. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But I think they should also put that same amount of time and effort into the rest of the aspects of the pen. If I'm paying $90 for a pen this size, I want it to have a really good nib. Even if you did charge me $10 more, just give it a really good nib. Make sure it's really polished. Make sure the flow is really good. You know, make sure the fit and finish are nice. They're not. We're going to come back to that. Just... There's a lot of small things about this pen, and some bigger things we're about to get into, that make me not feel like it deserves that $90 price tag. This inkwell is also like $70. Bucks. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather spend $70 on the inkwell than $90 on the pen. You can get them in a combo for about $175. Uh, this is all US dollars. I'll post their Etsy below so you can take a look and... I check prices for wherever you live. Uh, this is much, much better made. I really don't have any complaints about this at all, apart from it's a little bit hard to get the cap going when you start to unscrew it, but that's probably because of the size, and I, I'll take the small one with some, some issues uncapping it. Overall, though, this is completely worth the money. Well... It's more worth the money than the pen is. The price is still a little high. I'd really like to see it somewhere around 50 or 60 But it's not bad for what it is. And you're not going to be seeing anything that I dislike about this little inkwell. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and move on. Alright, on to what I dislike about this pen. Only two things here. But they're big things for me at least. Um, you guys know I really harp on fit and finish and this pen's not amazing with it um, you can see here the cap is actually uneven resulting in a sharp corner coming from the cap when you run it this way and a sharp corner from the body that way the edges right here on the top are again sharp you can see they're very precisely milled and I understand that's that's great and all but again they're sharp back here is the worst though this threading is ridiculously sharp along with the corners here but the threading is it's rough um, that's another reason I don't really recommend using the pen just uncapped and unposted. This stuff's a little, little bit rough. Probably the worst, though, is right here on the section, because that's where your hands are sitting most of the time. It is a very finely machined piece, resulting in it being a sharp edge. It's not super great. I honestly can't stand that. It's... It's one of the things I hate the most about this pen. It's the thing that I hate about this pen that I notice the most. I'll say that. And I, I don't just dislike it. I really can't stand it. This pen is not comfortable ergonomically. The ergonomics are terrible. And it's because of this. That's just that's just my opinion. Now, when it's resting against the back of your hand, especially when it's posted, it's fine. But as far as grip, it's terrible. Can't stand it. However, the worst part of this pen is the converter. <laughs> I never thought I would say that, but it's terrible. This is the worst converter I've ever seen in my entire life. It's it's really bad. Um, I'll show you here. So it's it's sort of like a standard international converter. Um, however, it instead of using like plastic or something, it uses this little brass rod. You can see right there. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, but you'll notice it, it, it appears to be covered with ink, which is odd because that would imply that when you pull it back up out of the body and that's all you really do, you, you kind of uh, slide it forward and then pull it back. But that would imply that when you pull it up back out of the body, that's not a proper seal, so it's not removing all the ink, and you'd be correct. But first, um, let me go and show you what it looks like when it's connected to the pin body. 
because if you bump this even a little bit, it is very, very loose. There's a lot of play here. And if wiggled enough, it can come off. However, I will say it will not come off in the uh, body just because it comes to the very end. This, this isn't going to fall out because it, it'll touch here. Um, so don't worry about it falling out. One thing I will say, though, when you're going to fill this and you're going to attach it, it has the ability to pull out past this little black part. Do not do this. Do not do this. I did this the first time. And you can see even more ink on the back of it there, which we'll get to again in just a second. When you do this and you screw this body back on, you can tell it extends past the body. So what's going to happen is if you have this filled all the way up and it pushes, it is going to push your ink out of this converter, out of the nib. The converter also sits kind of crooked. I don't know if you, how well you can see that. It's not straight and it, it can be bent at a very odd angle and still be attached semi-securely but it's still kind of concerning to me. The biggest thing with this converter though is it does not hold ink properly. Now where it connects to the pen it's mostly secure however you can see it's a little rough <laughs> to say the least. I don't know what they did to get this done but it's not it's not very professional looking. I'll say, it looks like it was cut with a hot knife or something. This, you know, just kind of how I'm seeing it. Um, but the worst part is back here where the little piston rod is, it doesn't seal well at all. Um, when you're using this, I've experienced ink coming out of the back of this semi-frequently. There's, I can almost guarantee you that there's ink in the body of this pen at least coating the insides a little bit. And I'll kind of try I'll try to rotate this bar a little bit so you can see what it looks like on the back. You can see there's a lot more there. Um, in everyday use I really don't have any issues with it. However, when filling and cleaning this ink gets everywhere and I can't stand it. This is the worst converter I've ever seen in my life and I, I, I'm not exaggerating. It's just a really, really bad. However, I will say one redeeming factor of this is you can use a standard international cartridge with this pen. I've tested it. It fits. It is quite a bit wider than this little converter is, but it doesn't get lodged in the body of the pen at all. Um, another thing you may be able to use, which I have not tested but should fit just fine, is the Caveco piston converters, um, which again are not very good. But, I feel they are more secure than this. However, I will say this one holds a lot more ink. So, there it is. Now, it is free with a pen. That's that's great. I mean, it's not free. You're still paying. It's $90. You're paying for it. But, it does come with a pen, so that's nice. But, it's just, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible converter. Um, I don't feel secure when using it. Uh, I just, I try not to think about it. And, once it's out of my mind, I don't really worry so much. But it's hands down the worst part of this pen, and I, I really wish they would do something about that. On to the right example. So here we have the Millum Pro. Bronze pocket pen. This is a medium nib, and the ink is Noodler's La Something Royale. I'm not even sure if that's spelled correctly. It's like a bluish purple. Um, so you can see there's quite a bit of skipping and hard starts here. That's what I was talking about. Granted, we had the pen uncapped for a, a decent bit, but even once the ink got flowing, uh, there's still been an issue on the N here, on the R, the Y, the L. It's not horrible. A little bit on the C there as well. 
not horrible, but it is present. Uh, just keep that in mind. And we'll go ahead and do a, um, a line size comparison. Someone asked me why I do a, a reverse writing line, then a regular line, and then a line with pressure. They said that it throws off the quantum flux of the universe or something stupid like that. The reason I do this is, one, it puts the regular writing line in between the two. This is what you're normally going to experience. If you want to go thinner, you can write with a reverse. If you want to go a little thicker, you can put down some pressure. Now, obviously, this is from small to large, which is fantastic, but it also gives you a comparison on both sides, which is the most important part to me, because I want you to be able to see how much variation you can get from the regular line with pressure. Now, if I did a regular line, a reverse writing line, and then a line with pressure, you know that 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 line with pressure, all you're getting is the variation from the reverse writing line. So I try to make them as close as possible, just to give you guys the the best um, closest experience that I, I can via video to see what variation you can get so that person can suck a butt um so I'll bring it up a little bit closer here so you can get a good look especially if you're on mobile you can see again there's there's skips and stuff it is a a bit of a finer medium nib as well i'd say closer to a japanese medium it doesn't feel super great to write with again it's not scratchy it's it's fairly smooth but I feel like I'm having to put a lot of effort into writing with it. And that may just be um, the weight of the pen being a bit back heavy when it's posted. It's not super back heavy, but it, it may be part of it. It's just not great. But it does work. And I think for quick notes, it'll serve you just fine. Once it's been capped, it seals up pretty well. And uh, overall, I think it's an okay writing pen, but these skips and hard starts are just too much. I'd probably widen the feed um, if you pick up one of these. All right, on to the conclusion. So, what are my overall thoughts of, of, of these things? Well, um, we'll go do the pen first again. <laughs> so, I think for a very pretty, fairly functional very durable desktop pen. This is great. It's it's very nice. It does work in your pocket as well, but I feel like you would want to look at this pen a lot. It's 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 nice. It just is. It's a it's a very nice appealing pen to look at. It's it's fairly functional in its use. And you're you're paying for the appearance I think a lot more than the functionality which is a bit of an issue um, in my opinion but some people prefer that some people do buy iPhones but it's it's a very functional piece of art it is not a very functional pen though there's obviously some issues with it ergonomically and writing wise and if you're going for just functionality in a pocket pen I would recommend the Quebec Lilliput I use this pen daily. Um, the only time I wasn't carrying this pen is when I was carrying this pen for a couple months. But it's it's nice. You can get it um, quite a bit cheaper than this pen if you go with the base aluminum model. If you go with something like this, the copper you're going to be paying very close. Um, and it is not as pretty. The machining is not as precise. However, the fit and finish are better. Um, Functionality-wise, it's much better. It's easier to write with, the nib performs better, it can use um, standard international cartridges very, very easily, and uh, it's not going to be as durable in a few other things, but as far as just straightforward writing instrument, the Lilliput is better. Now, if you're looking for something durable and pretty, the Millen Pro is better, again, in my opinion. This is a very interesting little pocket pen. I would be careful what I put this in my pocket with because these these uh, sharp corners will scratch up stuff in your pocket. Just be careful. But it's a very appealing pen. I can definitely see why people would want one. And overall, it's it's not bad. 
I, I, I can't, I can't say don't buy it. Um, however, I'm going to say be careful and know what you're wanting before you do purchase it. Now, on the other hand, this inkwell is really, really cool. Um, if you are in need of an inkwell and you want something super durable, really, again, really, really attractive looking, definitely pick this up. This thing's really, really awesome. Um, I really like to keep it on my desk at work just to have some extra ink around for when you do run out. It's, it's again, very well made, very same with the pen, very attractive looking in my opinion, fairly minimal with just a little bit of pop of design, and it's, it's an okay price on that. Now, as a package deal, $175, just uh, high. There are a lot of other pens I'd recommend for $100 than this, um, but if this is what you're wanting, it's not bad. It could be a lot better, um, I'll, I'll say that, but it's not bad. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you're interested in purchasing this pen, I will leave a link down in the description to their Etsy shop where you can buy this um, along with a bunch of other stuff they have. And this pen does come in a few different materials. If you want to purchase it in Mokutai and send it over to me, that'd be great. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. Again, big thank you to Millen for sending this along. Um, hopefully they take some of this feedback into consideration and try to improve their products just a little bit. You know, um, it's just my opinion, but um, there are a few other reviews you can go check out as well. I haven't watched it yet because I don't want to spoil it for myself. But um, Mick at the uh, the offstage me, um, he on Instagram, he also reviewed this pen, I believe in brass. So I'm going to go watch that now and see what he thought. Um, but you should go check him his stuff out as well. He's, he's uh, pretty great at what he does. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you enjoy this, subscribe. Thanks. Bye.